going to be continuing on in 8.4, and we're going to be taking a look at some more applications of quadratics. And again, this is a great time to pause the video as you go through it and to just process, because sometimes the information can be overwhelming when it's all at one time. So we're going to learn how to solve formulas that have squares or square roots in them for specific variables. That's going to be really important later on. We're also going to, going to use the Pythagorean theorem, applied formulas with area, and then quadratic functions as a model. So the theme of this is everything is going to have an exponent or it's going to require an exponent to solve it. So first we're going to take a look at solving formulas. So when I'm solving formulas, I want to isolate a variable. And in this case, in part A, I want to isolate R, but I don't have numbers. I have variables. And technically pi is a number, but it's not something like 2x. So if I wanted to get R squared by itself, I would treat that pi like it was a 2. I would divide both sides by pi. And then that gives me A divided by pi, and it's okay not to have a number there, equals R squared. To get r alone, I want to take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of both sides, it's going to give me the square root of a over the square root of pi, and it's positive or negative because it's a square root. But I have to rationalize that denominator using what we already know. I'm going to multiply by the square root of pi over the square root of pi, which is then going to give me the square root of a pi over pi. In the lab, the biggest problem that I see is people don't rationalize that denominator, and there is a video on that from earlier in the course. In B, I want to get A alone. So the first thing that I would do to get A alone is to go ahead and square both sides to get rid of the root. You could divide both sides by 30. That is okay. Either way would get us there but we're definitely going to have to get rid of the square root. So I square both sides, and when you square it, you're squaring 30 and the square root. So 30 squared is 900. The square of the square root cancels, and then I have S squared. So to get rid of P, I'm going to multiply both sides by P, and then to get rid of the 900, I'm going to divide. And that is solving that formula for A. Now here, if I want to solve this for t, this is a quadratic, it's three terms, but I have that weird k hanging out. So I'm gonna solve this with the quadratic formula because I don't know how to factor that because I don't know what k is, and there is one of these in the lab. So you're gonna use a quadratic formula. You're going to plug in a k where you see a c. And it's okay, you're gonna get something with k in it, and that's fine. The negative of negative 5 is positive 5. 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times k would be 25 minus 8k, all over 4. I cannot take the square root of 25 because it's 25 minus something. So that is as simple as that answer gets. Now in the lab, if you don't enter the plus or minus, it's going to mark it wrong. So make sure you're double checking that you have two solutions when you enter it into the lab. So now I'm going to look at the Pythagorean theorem. So here is Ms. Robinson's information on the Pythagorean theorem. I don't like the terms a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's something that's commonly used in textbooks, but I think it's hard because what is a, what is b, and what is c? Well, we have a, b, and c in the quadratic formula, and now all of a sudden you're trying to tell me about triangles. So I think it's confusing. So what I like to say is the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem says side squared plus side squared equals the leg squared. So I like to think of it that way. So if I'm looking at this ladder, I've got an image, and I know that x is the length of my ladder, and it's leaning against a house. So it forms a triangle. The distance from the bottom of that ladder to the house is 5 feet. So in my triangle, that bottom measurement is 5 feet. The distance from the top of the ladder to the ground is one foot less than the length of the ladder. So it would be minus one, the length. And now I can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Now, 
side squared plus side squared equals hypotenuse squared. So if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, I have a triangle. I know that this side, the horizontal, I know the vertical height. Those are my legs. Those are my sides. So I'm going to take those and square them, and I'm going to see that equals my hypotenuse. Now I'm going to have to FOIL x minus 1 squared. When I do 5 squared, I get 25. Then I FOIL. Then I have x squared. Anytime we have a quadratic, we got to get it in standard form. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. And look at what's really handy there is when I subtract x squared, they cancel, which is beautiful. 25 plus 1 is 26, and I add 2x to both sides. Then I divide both sides by 2, and I get that x equals 15, and that's the length of my ladder. So the distance then would be 12. So area is related to quadratics because our area is typically length times width, and a lot of times we wind up with squares when we're dealing with variables. So in this example, I have this rectangular pool. It's 20 feet wide and 40 feet long, but this gardener is adding on to that frame and she wants enough seed to cover 700 square feet. How wide will that strip be? So you see how we have these little X values. We're not really sure how much we're adding on to the length of the pool or the width of the pool. So I'm gonna make X be the width of that green grass strip. So that my larger rectangle would be 20 plus 2x. So that's this right here. And then this side would be 40 plus 2x. So all I've done is tack these x's on and added them to my sides. The area of my grass is going to be the difference in that large rectangle minus the pool. That's the part that I'm doing the grass with. So I'm going to put that into an expression. The area of my larger rectangle is length times width. I'm going to have to FOIL that. And then for my smaller one, for my rectangle of the pool, I can just use the dimensions. Now I'm going to get everything on the left. So it's in standard form. Once you're in standard form, you can factor. You can do the quadratic formula. You can complete the square. It is up to you. So here I divided everybody by 4 to see if things were easier, and then I factored it. So I got 35 negative 35 or 5. It's kind of a weird solution, right? Can something be negative 35 feet wide? No. So we're going to have to exclude that negative because I can't have a negative side length in geometry. So in the lab, when you're working this question, you've really got to be careful and make sure that you're eliminating that negative choice. The most common application of quadratics is with balls, um, projectiles. So when we're talking about basketball teams, they actually hire a statistician full-time, a mathematician, to work with these kinds of things. There are devices like TrackMan and Golf that actually tracks the arc of the ball and makes calculations based on that arc to tell the golfer ways to improve their stroke. So when we're looking at models, a lot of them are going to be rockets or balls, but there are other applications, especially in the study of economics. But we're modeling this with this equation. This models the equation. It's going to go from the ground level up, arc, and back down. If I want to know when it is 32 feet from the ground, I'm going to make it equal 32, and I'm going to solve for t. It's a quadratic, got to get it in standard form. Once it's in standard form, it is your option to how you want to solve. I would divide everybody by 16. That's just my process. Then from there, this does not factor. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. And we're going to get 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. Now, if I have a negative value, that's going to be problematic. So I'm kind of looking at this thinking, is it possible for 2 square root of 2 to be negative when I'm subtracting it from 4? And it's not. So what we can do is use the decimal approximation. In the lab, it will tell you round to the nearest blank. If it does not tell you to round, then you leave it in this format. Very important. 
And as I was talking about, this is another common use of quadratics is actually in economics. So I have this quadratic equation and it approximates the CPI. And I want to take that approximation and I want to approximate it for 2000. So then I'm going to plug in X equals 2000 minus 1980 that comes from the previous slide, which is 20 years. So I'm going to take that X value and I'm going to plug in 20 years to figure out what the value would be. And it's roughly 175. In what year did the CPI reach 50 means I am setting it equal to 150, not plugging in 150 because I want to know what year X is the number of years. I'm going to move that 150 over. Now I can use the quadratic formula. I could factor it, it'd be pretty tricky, but I could do it. And I'm going to be able to get 14.9. Why is there only one answer? Because if you get a negative number, you cannot have a negative year. So you're going to have to exclude the negative number there as well.